Good afternoon, I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. I missed morning chores today because I had to go into town for a doctor's appointment. So I'm back now and while I was away, Arnie got uh, the rest of that hay cut down. So we'll go have a look at that today. And we also have to check on the corn again. So let's go see what happening in the fields. These guys are just full and, and they're overheating. Eh? So I just came to check on the sheep. This is the straggler group and we got the fall born lambs back there. They're all in because it's another scorcher today. And now over here we have this group which is knockout and gladiators use. We just dewormed them yesterday, so we're gonna leave them in here for a little while. Make sure that they have no worms. Make sure they're in really good condition. They're getting grain now and nice hay. And probably August 1st, we'll be putting them in. We'll divide them in half again. So all the ones with the red dots are for knockout. And the ones with the green dots are with gladiator very soon. Same thing in this barn over here. We've got the Dorsets that are going in Sheriff's Group. They're in the front quarter and the ewes that were left over are in the other three quarters of the barn and they're still free to go outside. They weren't dewormed so like I say they're free to go out. Um, some of them we, we had our hundred before we got to the sheep and a uh, few were not as in as good condition as we'd like for breeding. So we just left them in here so that they can graze in the pasture and everybody's being supplemented with grain now. We got a few uh, keen dorsets out in the pasture. Today Arnie fed his first wrap bale of first cut hay because it's a little bit better quality than the dry hay and we want the sheep going on better nutrition now so with wet hay you want them to eat it up in a day or it goes kind of bad so because it's hot the sheep don't eat as much when it's hot. So normally they would have devoured the entire bale in this barn, but there is a little bit of the core left over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go bring it over to the rams as a treat. Let's see what they think of it. Here you can see the Dorset group and we have a divider wall up there now and these guys are the ones that are still going outside there you want to rub in don't ya you like that yeah and oh you, you're a little bit itchy that's okay, we can give you a scratch. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you are such a big baby, though. You are. Hey, do you like the new hay? Knockout. Look, that's really yummy stuff. You gotta like that. Now you're more interested in what's going on over there, aren't you? Sure, he's got a lot of wool there. You're a nice boy. You are 
a nice boy. Really nice. Yeah, you are. What do you guys think? Does it look good to you guys? <coughs> Hi, Cracker. Like this. Well, they seem to already. Well, you see, these guys are fighting. Ben! You see? They're feeling way better. They're all fighting. Yeah, that's why we don't have knockout in, in with the other rams, because we don't want fighting and him getting injured after we paid all that money for him. What about the used? Did they get any? I can make a park over there. Because I see they all watched you. That's why the bail always had to drive, but he's full. I gave him a, I gave him a handful a few hours ago. He can only eat so much. That's right. But that actually, that's actually sauce and smells really good. So these are the girls that are going to the new home. But we're going to give them some nice hay. The ones on this side we thought were poor, so we're going to give them some better quality feed here. Give some of that good hay to the ones that are sold too. It's a cow right away. Yeah. Well, the difference with the wrapped hay is that it's softer. Instead of it being um, crackly when you touch it, it, it's just, it's really soft and you see how they like it. They had a whole bale of the dry hay there, but now that this is there, they much prefer it. But we couldn't feed it any earlier because it has to cure when it's wrapped. And it will go off if you feed it too soon so you have to wait a month right before it to cure before you can feed it right what? you have to wait a month before you have can feed a rat bale yeah, well it takes to cure the hay i think it's 20 days 21 days to cure that means it'll quit heating up the cool down if you use an inoculum on the haylitch you can actually cool it down in about uh, three hours, three days, it, it can be cooled down. It speeds the process up. Anopic. It sounds bad, but it's not. It's actually uh, a live bacteria that you put on the, on the hay. I used to do it all the time with the hay in the saddles. But it's expensive, eh? Yeah, I'm guessing if you don't need to add anything to it, you shouldn't. Well, the, the reason why we did it in the, for the milk cows because we see, we filled, we, we quit filling on Tuesday, and I and on Tuesday night I was I was opening the salad feeding, so the hat it cannot act up. The hat That's right. Down. That's so right. This here you have. You know, they pick it right out. Okay, we are getting in the truck and I'm gonna go see how the rest of the second cut hay is drying out. Arnie just cut it and is hoping to bale it tomorrow.
before the next rain comes in. And we decided to bring Benny for a little drive too. Get him used to the car. Then I puke. Because he's not too keen on car rides. Okay, we're here at the second cut field. That's good. Now, if you look way over in the distance, see where it's kind of light green? That's where we took off the first cut. Not the first cut, but the first of the second cut that we brought home the other day that was so nice. And this is the rest. So you can see the majority of the field is still here. You can tell them about it now. No, you're doing the fine job, honey. Oh, okay. He wants to be in the picture. What? I don't want to go in the field. <laughs> no, I'm the field okay, go. Whatever. I think there's a hundred day out here for sure. Ash is it's, it's a real good crop, actually. For, for the dry weather we've had. And is it drying up? It's really drying good. But it will dry up really good with the dew in the morning. And it'll be ready to go in the after chores. Ready for that. So tomorrow we're going to get this all ready and get a bale, and I don't know how many bales I can get home by the evening, because I'll be all by myself, eh? But uh, we'll probably wrap them up, what's tomorrow, Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have, are we wrapping them up uh, on Thursday, probably? And then we've got another 30 acres to go. So when, when did we make these bales? A couple of days ago. Two days ago? I'm not sure, a couple of days. Okay, well look at this here. It's dry out here, I admit it's dry, eh? Yeah. But look at here. See how much grass is already growing? Look, it's growing in, uh, almost an inch or two inches already, even with the dry we weather. So, what's nice about orchard grass, or th this is orchard grass in here. And what, what's nice about orchard grass in, in, in dry conditions, it actually has a good root system. So it has a, quite a good root, and, and it's actually pulling the moisture up, the little bit of moisture we have. And, and you can see, even the alfalfa is already starting to sprout. Two days. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, before September, we'll probably have a whole other cutoff here again. Or we wait till the 1st of October and cut it late. Hey, Ben. But that's, that's why when you choose your grasses, there's certain grasses that can tolerate dry conditions. And certain grasses, like Timothy, Timothy cannot, Timothy is a one cut hay. It doesn't come back. Unless you have a lot of moisture. To the point where there's too much moisture. So Timothy is not good. But uh, orchard grass, alfalfa, perch and true soil, red clover. Uh, you're not to see red clover. That's white, white clover. Yeah. But you, you, can, you can see the alfalfa right here. It's already spreading. So I'm thinking we, we get two or three nice rains on this, this whole thing will green right up. Hey Ben. And we had uh, two fields of first cut that we never managed to get to, and we didn't want our second cut to get ruined by waiting. We explained to you in a previous video why you don't want to wait too long on getting your alfalfa up. So we gave Corey Doyle a call. He's the one who farm sits for us when we go away on that extremely rare, rare occasion. And uh, we gave him those two fields. We don't charge him for that. Some people charge people for that, but we figure if someone's doing us a favor by getting it off the field, that's uh, a bonus for us. So right now, Corey's out in the field cutting first cut hay for his beef cows. Okay, it's 10 days later and we're back at the cornfield and Arnie's six foot two. Look at that. They didn't spray this field down, the little buggers. And look, we got baby corns. Those are the babies. So now you have to watch what you say. Why? Oh. Cornfields have ears. That's right. So you have to be careful. Don't be talking about the neighbors. <laughs> or Dave Elliott or Willow Steeds. We don't want to be talking any bad about them right now because they should be listening. So let's see where the stick is. Is that, is that, is that a shock to me, eh? How that grows, eh? Yep. Oh, 
um, it's kind of, <laughs> I thought it was kind of middle-ish here. Where do you think that is? That's kind of a um, it was a fairly, it was a white stick. But, oh, did I see it in there? This is why people can get lost in the cornfields and they make horror movies about it. How many rolls are you going to have I don't know. You probably should have counted that. Can you see it? No. I figure you had it in at least five or six. I'm going to try. Yeah, because you can't have it combined. You know what? I might walk, look down the rows. Oh, you found it? Where are you? Okay, so I'm going to come in there. We're going to go through. Right here you can look at it. So here's our stick. So this was the mark. This was the mark, and in, in, uh, we took first a month ago, right? No, no, twenty I, days ago, right? Yeah. So that was the first mark, and then, and then in uh, in ten days it grew that much. This mark right here, it grew yeah. in ten days. In ten days, it grew right past the stick. I'm thinking it's almost a foot past the stick. Yeah, for sure. So this is six foot. That's about seven. It's eight feet high already. Yep. Yeah, happens fast. So the corn looks nice. Um, maybe you should take the stick out. What do you think? Well, Scott probably wouldn't like it in the comments. Probably wouldn't. So I'm so, thinking take it out. So remember I told you about our corn as a drought plant? Yep. Look at here. You Ooh. see how we've had a little bit of rain? And it's overflowed in the, in the pockets. And look where the water's ended up. See the dark spot? See where all the dark is? Where, yeah. the, where the water ends up? Yeah. So that's why this, that's why corn does extremely good. Even a heavy dew will, will add moisture to this crop. Good. So this is a no-brainer. So we got lots of corn. Unless we have a hailstorm where we get it all knocked down. Or a tornado. Or a tornado. But we'll leave that for Alberta. Oh, oh. Hey. Okay, I'm gonna I'll take him for a walk down the rows here. Are we? Or you can you go, go first? You can go so we can look at you. Look at your arse. Okay. This is children of the corn. from top to bottom. <laughs> Come straight out. You can get lost in the corn. Okay, so that's one side. And he here's here's your I hate to toot my own horn. Yeah. And see how the roots are all sticking out? That's well actually they're uh, they're actually helper roots uh, keep them from going over. So they're like um, suspension rods. That's right. Or suspension cables. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of weight there with a bad, uh, with a bad storm now, right? See, this one here is going to produce two ears. Oh, I actually, made a three in that one. Two ears now. Two ears. Suspension cables are kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. That's about as big as you can get a stock right there. Yeah, that's a nice stock. So let's see how bad ours is. Just across the laneway here. It's done quite well too, actually. Yeah, considering that you doubled them up for some reason. I doubled them up because one, one of my, uh, when I went around the field one time, one of my, uh, one of my cedars uh, broke, the, broke the band in, in the cedar. And, and uh, I, I really, I don't know why I didn't stop. I thought it would just kind of blow over, but it didn't. So now I was missing, out of the four rows of corn, I was missing one row. So I'm thinking, better see the double, but really probably should have left it alone. Probably, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so this is just as tall. Because I'm going to lose you now. Where are we now? Yeah, it's... <laughs> well, once you get in there, 
Okay, you're gonna stop short. That's where you were in about the other one, eh? This one's a little less, but not much, or any. And the reason, the reason why I told you earlier, the reason why most people would be extremely happy with this. Yeah. But that's a like virgin land. Yeah. And this land has been farmed for years. If you, if you really love your soil and love farming, you really should give this field a break. It should run their uh, off them. And, that, and that's what we tried to do yeah. with the barley field. We planted alfalfa, yeah. only to have chemicals thrown on it yet again. But you know, you know, the, you know the story in the barley field? I can only blame myself. Did you know how you have to deal with people? You hire them and you say, when you go to the field or go to my farm, don't touch the field until I'm there. But Ernie, they don't listen to you. How many times have we said that? Well, they, well, the next time I do business with them, I'm going to do that. It's kind of degrading, but that's the way I'm going to word it. Well, it is. Don't I mean, move that's, unless you're told to move. That's their job, but right. you'd think that they know their job. Well, you think the 10 inches of the alfalfa on the bottom would be kind of obvious. Yeah, well, we'll go show them that field, too. No, it's kind of depressing. It's a depressing field. Look at how beautiful it is. And some smart aleck made a comment saying that it was totally our fault because we told the dealer to come spray the barley field. But like I said to him, we told him to spray the fall barley field. And since they're the ones that work with us, they know where the fall barley fields are as opposed to spring barley, which this is. Another thing is, even if you're not a feed dealer who specializes in spraying crops and seeds and stuff, it should be very evident. See all this green stuff? It growing in amongst the thinly grown barley. The barley is a shade crop meant to protect the alfalfa. So it's, it's planted not really close together so that it can give a little shade to the alfalfa that's growing so that the alfalfa didn't burn off. But it will give us a little bit of a barley crop as well. So another thing that anyone should have known, especially a sprayer and a feed dealer, is when you come into a field like this, there's no, no question that one, this barley isn't ready because we told them it's the field that has to be combined next week. And these, these, this barley hasn't bent over into the flag. Remember we said it, it bends over like a flag? So it's standing straight up, it's still not ready to be combined. And look, everywhere you look, alfalfa. You would have to be a blind man not to see that. There is no excuse, no matter which way you slice it, for this happening. Did someone say it was my fault? Yeah, that, there's a, an idiot who uh, follows our channel. Yeah. I don't know why he follows it because it doesn't matter what I say, he'll tell me that uh, everything that goes wrong is our fault. He probably lives in a dump too. Yeah, I <laughs> figure he's just a, a loser. <laughs> you, know, you know the first issue here is... His name is Jonathan, Jonathan Lock, Locklear. The first issue here is there's several barley fields. If you don't know which one it is, the first thing that you is is go, bingo, I'll make a phone call and find out which field I'm supposed to go in. You just don't grab the first field handy. Yeah. Well, that's what, I, and I explained that this is all finely spaced barley, quite obvious to even uh, a, a blind man that there is alfalfa growing all the way through. So right now, the alfalfa looks beautiful. See, see, there? see how lovely it was? It's bending over. It's going to die. But it's all, all of this green that you see, it's our, our alfalfa. And look at how big this field is. Oh, well, whatever. We're they killed it all. We're going to, Look at that. We're going to direct seed it here in a couple of weeks, and it'll be fine. We, yeah, we're going to have to reseed it. And Willows are going to pay for the, all the damages, and and uh, and for my troubles. So. Well, well, we're going to charge them. We'll see uh, see how easily it comes across. And, uh, but and, uh, it still doesn't take into account the inconvenience because we're busy. We're on our own. We're not getting help, so we have to reorder the seed, replant it, hope that it rains because. And the other reason why you don't spray it either, what is that? What color is that? It's green. It's not even ready to spray. I know. I said that why too. Why would you spray it? It's not even ready in. And right. 
And maybe a person who's never seen uh, grains before wouldn't know that, but this is a feed dealership that specializes in growing and spraying crops. And the guy who did it is a veteran. And you know what Dave said to me, the sprayer? You know the first thing he said to me? He said, well, I kind of wondered what was going on. He said, there was no weeds. Yeah, and no. I'm going, if there's no weeds, why would you say, Arnie, you're wasting your money. We're not going to spray it. But the city goes, oh, well, there's no weeds. Let's spray it anyhow. He's going to pay for it. You have to wonder, are these people actually helping me or just milking me? It's just, uh, Anyways, let's move it, on. it's something that uh, Challenge. when you look at it, it makes you so angry. Because look at this field. It's spectacular. I we're like this is the field we were most proud of. And I don't know. Yeah, it's still extremely upsetting. Well, it got dark really quickly today and we lost track of time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed your day with us at Utopia Farms. If you did, you know, be sure to like, give us a like and share with your friends and be sure to send us a comment. But most importantly, join us again tomorrow for the next episode. Bye for now.